Uneducated, unfiltered, unhinged. This is the Mangina Dialogues. We at it again with your host Nick Scopes and the Gregolicious. You know how we do, cause you know we keeping it gangster and silly. Unplugged like a fool swung titty. About get jitty, cause you know we down to the nitty and the gritty. And we make shit sound so damn pretty. Yeah, cause this unhinged comedy. And right now you're in the mix. So get ready, cause we about to get it poppin'. And we ain't stopping. I'm educated, I'm filtered, I'm Hello and welcome to the Mangina Dialogues. I am your host, Nick Scopes. And I don't know why I'm laughing at that for the 180th time, but <laughs> I am, I'm Greg Alprin. Uh, what's up, Greg? And today, <laughs> our guest, I have to say I'm very honored, she named her comedy album after me. It's called Voluptuous Boy. I did. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Sarah Tolamash, how are you? Good. How are you guys? Doing all right, you know, super busy, not bored at all. Oh, yeah. You know how it goes. Just, <laughs> just so much to do. I like my plans. I'm just, I don't know. I'm, where am I going to go tonight? You know, that's what I keep thinking. I know. I'm always like, I need to wake up early and I get ba- uh, mad at myself. And then I'm like, but why? Because then I would be <laughs> like noon yeah. and then I would have yeah. nothing to do. Yeah. That's Pretty good in my the, the, the Wi-Fi at my office went down yesterday and it was like in, in the middle of us recording a, a podcast with someone. And after that happened, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do now. <laughs> like, I've got, I've got no Wi-Fi. I, I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Like the world may literally come to an end. <laughs> You're like, well, that's my day. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Like if, if, if you don't have Wi-Fi right now, you're kind of screwed. No, absolutely. I mean, I've been watching a lot of movies that are like pre Wi-Fi or kind of like settlers time or whatever. And I'm like, I guess that's what you did before in a phone and Wi-Fi is you just built your house. Yeah. <laughs> really is amazing. And it's so funny because it's like it's not that long ago. Like I moved out to the suburbs in like the mid 2000s, right from the city, from Manhattan. And I remember when I would go online, I would have to like tell all my friends, don't call me because I'm about to sign on to America online right now. Don't knock me off of my phone line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like just to, I don't even know what I was doing at that point, probably having going in chat rooms on AOL. Oh, yeah. Or I get worried when I have to go to like, I don't know why, but like, why is it that your parents' house has the worst Wi-Fi? I get I get so angry. I'm like, why can't you guys update to a better plan? This is ridiculous. <laughs> they just don't care. I mean, I I don't know how old your parents are. My, my dad's in his 70s and they just yeah. don't give a shit. He doesn't yeah, want to learn anything podcast. new. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't learn anything that he just learned YouTube like two years ago. Like he's figured that that's how he watches my pocket. He can't figure out anything. Just hands me his phone every time I see him. You know, what's oh, great. Like, do like, this. I, I don't know how, like, I don't, I was, I know how old Nick's dad is. I don't know how old your parents are, but my mom is in her late seventies and she just figured out emojis on her iPhone that I got her a couple of years ago. So now she talks to me almost exclusively in emojis. <laughs> that's awesome. I like that. My mom is anti, she's not on Facebook. She's not on any social media. And so, and she doesn't even really return text. She's like, call tech, use my phone, not the landline. And I'm like, what? It doesn't even matter. You don't return or reply back. Like it'll be eight hours later that I hear from her. Yeah. Yeah, It's amazing. My mother somehow got, got tech savvy for a senior citizen by no means is she tech savvy but she figured out how to send like that bit emoji where it actually looks like you yeah Yeah. so she she (laughs) sent only in bit emojis and emojis she'll communicate she doesn't call me thankfully um that much mostly it's texts and it'll be like random texts where out of the blue she'll just tell me that my uncle grew a 14 pound watermelon yeah right i'm like what why like, <laughs> like like that's someone great. needs to know <laughs> someone needs to know and like you know it's pretty weird when your mom sends you a watermelon emoji and then you have to figure out what the hell it is she's talking about <laughs> yeah thank god it wasn't the eggplant yeah, i they know know that stuff uh, I, like I, mom I, no <laughs> that's how nick communicates with me nick almost only oh, sends me eggplant emojis that's one of my favorite emojis of all time yeah hands down so have you been doing like show like a lot of shows 
like in the last several months? So like, did you do a lot of the park shows with Stand Up New York? I felt like um, up until about like October, maybe to like um, right before Thanksgiving, I was pretty busy doing just regular outdoor shows. And then right. like um, there was a right before the holidays, like Christmas season, all of a sudden all these comics started getting sick. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, oh, I'll just chill out on the outdoors and being all that was super cold. Uh, there weren't that many, but now things are picking up with Zoom. And then now there's, I found some places that do outdoor um, right. shows. So it's been, it's getting better. I just took like two months off. Right. What did you think of the shows in the park and all the, the outdoor shows that, up, you know, in, in weird places with odd audiences and, you know, a birthday party of you know 25 five-year-olds standing behind the next tree yeah you know what um, at first i was like i was this you know i've done it pre-pandemic i've done one or two shows outdoors and i'm like comedy should never be done outdoors yeah and then when you were thrown into it and you had to i got used to it and i ended up really really liking it because it felt like a really neat thing because it was one of the few um i guess out arts that you could do yeah Sure. easily and so you could put a mic or you didn't even have to put a mic show up and then i felt like more people were coming to outdoor shows than regular comedy shows yeah and the bar was set so low that you could really just throw stuff to the wall and see if it stuck and then it, so i enjoyed it it felt like there were no gatekeepers and that you didn't have to kill so then you could like work on a lot of stuff so i i, I thought it was neat and i enjoyed it but I wouldn't mind going back to indoors. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Nick did a few and, yeah. um, you know, he had a, a, a good experience. He, he'll tell you. I, I thought it was really cool as a, as someone that to watch, um, you know, because I don't want to say the bar was low, but the expectations, you know, it's like you weren't you were kind of like so happy that there was something to try to make you laugh and, and do, especially if you were a fan, that it gave you some cool stuff to do because you could go to two, three, if you're a comedy fan, you could go to a couple of shows in the park in a day or within a few days and see just awesome talent, you know, line yeah. up, just whatever. And it was, I thought it was awesome. You know, Nick, Nick, <laughs> Nick has a good one. One of his, his com, uh, comedian friends, Gus gave him a line similar to yours. Like the bar was so low, you know, he like, yeah, I remember it was one of like the first shows back after like things started to kind of open up. And me, you know, I'm only like two years into comedy, two and a half. So like, I'm always like, what should my set be? And I'm overthinking, like, what should it be? And I was talking to him. I'm like, what are you going to do tonight? And like, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, listen, he goes, the bar has never been lower. He's <laughs> like, just have fun. He, he's like, the expectations are so low. He's like, the booker for Fallon's not going to fucking be here. Just <laughs> calm down. And I was like, you're right. We're under a tree. There's a five-year-old's birthday party right there next to us. There's a, you know, bunch of shirtless frat guys doing Frisbee or fucking hack, like the hacky yeah. sack or whatever. I was like, yeah, I should calm down. Maybe, you know, I should just like relax. The, the best one was the last one we, he did um, that we went to was in like what late October, mid October. And late October. It, it, it just started getting like cold, like chilly. And during the car, Carmen was it Carmen Lynch who was on at the time and the girl started stripping like 20 oh feet away God. like Carmen Lynch was on and maybe it was probably a hundred, probably, yeah. probably like a hundred yards back yeah. there's all of a sudden it's just Carmen Lynch she's in the middle of her set doing her thing someone's playing like Usher and Pitbull yeah. and it's it's a girl dance and she rips her shirt off she just has nipple tassels on it's directly behind Carmen and it's like during her <laughs> it's set like and I was like low-key energy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it wasn't like just someone being it was loud there was music it was for someone's birthday and like they like had like a, a neon outfit on and a thong and nipple tassels and they ripped their shirt off and i was like oh and pants. man and the pants yeah, and went. Pan yeah and and pants. Pants went. it was it was a scene <laughs> i was like this oh is yeah it. <laughs> in new york you can go topless it's yeah. not against the rules and you know, for a voluptuous boy, he should be taking more advantage of that. Yeah, <laughs> I should. I thought about it, but you know. So it's funny because I was I was doing you know a bunch of research and looking, and and you recorded that like three days before the world like locked down. Yeah, it was like it was March eighth, and then I think March thirteenth oh, was, uh, or maybe it was March ninth, and then it was March thirteenth. Like a, it was actually Friday the thirteenth that it felt like everything yeah. was just done. 
Yeah. I remember that. That was the last show and, I, we did as well. Yeah. And I'll tell you, like, I, I'm just thinking back to that time because I went to a concert at Madison Square Garden on the 10th, right? And I debated not going because it was literally as everything was kicking up. Like, if you go outside your house, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get sick and die. And yeah. I'm like, I paid $300 to go see, like, this Almond Brothers reunion show. I'm going, right? And me and my friends were on the fence about, like, literally are we going to go in are we not going to go in and we finally said screw it let's go in and we went in we stayed for half the half the time and left but it was on our mind the entire time like the entire time so were you thinking when you were performing for those shows obviously you know you knew what was going on in the news it was basically about to shut down the world did that at all affect your performance or come into play no because i was just like in a self-centered <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? We're like, I just want to get yeah, it you're about done. To go on. Yeah. You know, this is a hard thing to get. You got two tries to get it on tape yeah. and you want it to be good. Um, it was on my mind because I had my a friend of mine asked to do a guest spot. And when he got there, he was like, already, he's like, I can't shake hands. I'm sick. And he had just gotten off a cruise oh, or God. whatever. And yeah. I was so oh, mad at him that's a horrible for being so irresponsible. Like, dude, it's just a guest spot. No one gives a shit. Like go home. Right. Um, and that I remember. And then I remember one girl had, uh, tagged me in a, like a Facebook or, a like a public forum and was like, does anybody want Sarah uh, tickets to her show tonight? I'm not going to go because of COVID. And I remember being like this, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're ruining it. You just did it <laughs> privately, like, or you don't have to say anything, but like stop causing panic for people. And so I didn't have it in my mindset then. And I didn't really think of it. I actually really almost to like two or three days prior before we shut it down. I was just thinking this was going to be like bird flu or SARS, yeah. like whatever. It's just a thing that happens in China. And every now and then they'll get like 14 cases. But then I think it was once like Seattle old folks homes just got ripped apart with it. Um, then I started taking it seriously. And then this is the weird story with it. I was shooting America's Got Talent the day that Tom Hanks got it. And oh I remember being like, this is weird. I hate it. Uh, they have us all in one room the whole time. It was nasty. I also saw like one of the kids, like it was a like a huge family that was like a musical family. One of their like four-year-olds kept drinking water from the communal water fountain with his mouth directly on it. Ugh. And then when I made it to the, like the taping of it, like to the stage, there was no one in the crowd. Wow. It was like 40 people. It was so depressing. And then that was like, when you're like, this is real. And then I was going to stay out in LA a little bit longer. And then I, I was nervous that they were going to, um, you know, start doing travel bans and that would right. have to figure out how to get back to New York by like car or something. Right. Yeah. That's pretty wild. I, um, we did a show on the 13th too, that Friday, the 13th, that was the last show that we did until the summer yeah right? it was it was a long time yeah that know. was the last one because yeah. we you know we 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 do shows out here in connecticut and we're booking a room um every week for six eight months and then uh all this happened and that was the last show and we debated canceling that show like uh, up until the day of we're like do we cancel this do we do it and we're like it sold out it was like a big show <laughs> And we're like, eh, let's ask people who are on the show if they care. And at that point, people are like, like you, it's like, oh, it's like a flu, like, you know, whatever it is, what it is. Yeah. We'll be done with this in a month. And yeah. we're like, yeah, go on with the show. <laughs> and we did it. So and, naive. Yeah, I know. Right. And I, oh, and I looking like, back, like I remember for like work, they closed, you know, shut down work and everything. And I was like, Woo, we're going to get like a two week vacation. This is yeah. great. And then three months later, we're like, no. OK guess we're <laughs> still doing this hey, you, li you live in the city right yeah i live in the city um i didn't yeah i i, I guess i just didn't have panic until like all of a sudden they it was just everything was shutting down and then i was like oh fuck right it's yeah it's time but you know what though i think you guys if you there would have been no harm if you did your show in connecticut i think did yeah. you do it 
Yeah, we did it. No, we did yeah, it. We did yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. We, I think we it's had fine in hindsight looking back on some stuff. Yeah, especially at that point. Like if we were trying to do it and it was, you know, a very, it was just so new. I mean, I think Connecticut shut down the, the next 16th, day. The yeah, 16th. Like two days later, it's crazy. You know what's crazy? This was, I heard there, New York is opening up inside dining again, like with restricted inside dining. Yeah. But it, the, the numbers are worse than it was when we shut down dining in the yeah, you know <laughs> it's interesting it totally is it's uh, you, you can't really started. go back to like march april though because there just wasn't testing to know how much was actually out there yeah. but it the whole I, I mean i have a a super um like i i think shutting down the restaurants at this point was is kind of pointless i agree you know in some way like I think it's up to like discretion of who wants to do like go or not, but it's been the, whatever the government or whatever policy about it has been so confusing to these small business owners that I just think it's like been so harmful for them. Yeah. You know, it totally is. I mean, we did, we did our, our our first, like out here in Connecticut, performing arts centers are open, right? So you could go to the, like to a theater, right. And, and and see stuff um, or a concert or anything like that. So you could do that in Connecticut. The, the, the rules are maximum indoor capacity of 100 people, right? So yeah. we did a show Saturday night, the first, first show we actually didn't done at a theater that normally holds 650 people, and we did it to 100 people, which was great. I mean, it was 100 people get to come out and, and see That's a great a show. Lot, you know, but if you think about it. It's, if you no, saw it how is. It's great. the like, venue oh was God, set up, you could throw a football between people at the different like stations where they were sitting. Yeah. Right? So, you know, it's great that you could do it, but it, it still seems to me a, a little too restrictive. Yeah, I just thought, remember, I remember seeing that woman that had her a restaurant and she com- did, you know, everything that you needed to do with the outdoor dining. And then they shut it down. And then right next to it, this was in LA. And they had this huge craft service tent for outdoor eating for a job on a film that you're like, how is this any different than what she was doing? Yeah. I don't like, I truly don't even understand the outdoor dining stuff. Cause I'll drive by places out here and <laughs> you know, they have big gigantic tents, double the size of their indoor capacity outside, totally closed in no ventilation whatsoever. Yeah. And like you're sitting inside a balloon. Yeah. Like, that's okay. I, like, I know it's, it's, I, you're like, I don't understand how that one is getting away with it, but then like this one isn't. And then it just feels like either everyone or no one. That's how yeah. I feel about it. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it sucks. It, and uh, I, I've told the story, I've told the story a million times in this podcast, but like, so I, besides, you know, stand up, I work in the gym industry here in Connecticut and they, you know, I work for Equinox and when we reopened in June, gyms reopened in Connecticut uh you know you could you could wear your mask uh if you you had to wear your mask if you were moving around the gym but if you were in one area you could take it off and we weren't allowed to have showers and then New York City opened up their gym September and you had to required to keep a mask on but you could have showers so you could share a public shower with someone who just worked out but yeah. you couldn't go see live comedy indoors or eat indoors a restricted amount of people. So I was like, no, this doesn't fucking make sense. Like, I don't understand. Where's the consistency, even in Connecticut, like you, you wear your mask, you walk to your table at indoor dining, you take it off and you sit, you're still in a room with a bunch of people. (laughs) You're just sitting. You know what I mean? (laughs) When you get up, you got to put it on and go to the bathroom. And it's like, well, we're still, we're all here. It's all performative after a while. Like um, my family lives in Texas and like, some were crazy. Oh, Some establishments were like, hell no, if we see you wearing a mask in there, like then they're, they hate it, which yeah. I think that's ridiculous. But sure. there were other places that were like, you know, it, it was up to you. Starbucks, you could go in, you had to wear a mask. I mean, I didn't mind where, I don't mind wearing a mask. And I feel like that's a fine protocol to ask people. And that's not a lot to ask, but I think having people close stuff down seems a lot. Especially yeah. when they're not doing anything for a lot of those people. You know, it's yeah, really yeah, yeah. grossly unfair to say, you know, the, the, the place that we, you know, we built a comedy club at, and a cabaret at, that was in like a two floor nightclub bar. Right. And they let us 
have full run of the place to do comedy every night of the week if we wanted. And we were running comedy shows four nights a week in a beautiful cabaret style 70 person room. And, but it was a bar, they didn't serve food. So when everything started to open up, the mandates were, you know, if you don't sell food, you can't open, right? And to this day, a place like that can't open. They wound up going out of business. They'll never open up again. Yeah, and I've seen that. Just not places closing. Oh, totally. And no one's doing anything for them. You know, it's yeah. not like they're they don't have to. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, let's talk about comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fuck know, this. You know, it's so fuck hard this. because everything kind of gets politicized when you start talking about it. But like, just as a human. Yeah. and like detriment to people's livelihood you're just like this is crazy yeah i mean it do, it is crazy it i mean i had covid it sucked yeah. right and i wouldn't want anyone i know to get it right because i mean i didn't even have it that bad but i had it and it still sucks but you know like life has to go on at some point like you have to live and you have to be responsible you know yeah i just figured like wear your mask and then like if you're going into i don't know i wouldn't have gone into high risk places like i wasn't going into bars or yeah, clubs right. and stuff like that but like i definitely went to a movie theater when that opened and i felt perfectly fine yeah, yeah. i've eaten indoors i felt fine i don't know it's just up to you yeah, yeah the the mask thing just real quick i was i i like i love history and i was watching something on netflix about world war ii and they were showing footage of like the late thirties in Japan and people are on the train in masks. And I was oh, like, Oh yeah, they know. Cause and they I was like, in a highly populated area. Yeah. I was like, this has been happening forever. It's not, oh, yeah. totally. it's I mean, new. Yeah, <laughs> it's the late thirties. I've gone to China a bunch and everywhere you go over there, you know, there's people on the streets and everywhere wearing masks. Like it's just part of the culture. Yeah. Yeah, well, and then they you're, they just come from like highly populated areas where they're on top of each other. Also, the other thing that's like so fascinating too is like how America handled it. Like you do really think of the U.S. as being a first world place, but there's other countries that you would be like, oh, I felt like they were not as economically developed, but they have like sanitation stations that you walk yeah. through before you go into establishments. So you're like, why aren't we doing this? Yeah. I think it's tough. I think it's tough. Well, whatever. We don't have to get in that. But the U.S. is just so big, probably compared to those other countries. You know, you got 350 million people. True. Well, it's it's tough. Like in the, like when all that when they were like, you know, the U.S. is worse than any other country. It's like, well, we have 350 million people. Of course, <laughs> they're like it's worse than Italy. It's like Italy has eight, eight. Italy has eight million. We have 350 million people. Of course, it's going to be worse. What the yeah. fuck are you talking about? <laughs> When everyone's like praising the the prime minister of New Zealand, I'm like, she has like oh. a thousand people to deal with. It's totally different. And not only different, New Zealand, they probably can't even get sick because they're so pickled on booze. <laughs> That's true too. Like, yeah. and they're so spread out they like live with i mean i have a bunch of friends from new zealand like you know really from new zealand and um it just hanging out with them is hard if you're not a career full-time 24 hour a day drinker like yeah the smallest <laughs> girl i know can drink me under the table six times like so easy so i i just think nothing affects those guys like yeah truly. Like they're just <laughs> so much booze running through their veins. I, just, I, I, I get so annoyed when we, see, when we get compared to them. I'm like, we're not the same. You look nowhere we, have, near. <laughs> we have 350 million people. A, B, a lot of these fucking people are fat. And it's going to be a real problem for them. A lot of health issues. We have yeah. a lot of different nationalities with all sorts of different health issues. We're a mixed pot. Don't compare us to fucking Italy. Like, <laughs> not, we're not drinking wine and bread. Like they, they just take all of August off. They're never stressed. Yeah. Even the Maseratis, they're not even that good a car. They fucking fall apart. It's one hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's like what the? They don't give whatever. I'm getting heated. I took yeah, a nap I, before. Just, just by the way, Nick's last <laughs> name is Copaletti. He's a full on Italian, so yeah. I don't know what. Yeah. Why, hey, love, why, the, love why, the Italian people. Why love the Italian Italy people. right now. I have no idea. But. Because they're fucking like, come on, they shut down for a whole month. Whatever. Anyway, I just yeah. like. That's what, you, that's what you get, Italy. Anyway, let's talk about roast battle. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. Well, we're so, roasting a country right now, so <laughs> I know, right? So I have to tell you that it. I actually, I liked the post roast interviewed segment that they did with you guys. Oh my god, I like, like those are so stressful. More yeah, than I mean, both. for one, that your guys' kiss at at the end was it was so. I, I, 
it made me laugh so hard. Like I laughed, I was so laughing at that. It was like, do I have to kiss my husband? That like it was so funny to me how that like went down. I'm sorry, I just I thought it was hysterical. But the roast was amazing. Like oh yeah, well anytime somebody's like kiss, you're like gross. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it looked, I, kissing in front of people is like weird. It it Super actually. Weird. It looked very much like my wedding video. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, that is exactly what my wedding video looks like. Yeah. <laughs> like the command kiss. And it's like, you know, some people go for it, but most people are like, this is weird. My parents are in the front row. Yeah. It's also yeah. weird. I was going to do this as a bit, but it never did anything. But like the idea of like, uh, Mar kissing at the end of a marriage ceremony is like one of the only and you do it when you do it because we did it in front of the justice of the peace before we did the ceremony right you're like it's one of the few business deals one <laughs> i think the only business deal you do where you kiss the other person that you're in a business deal with. <laughs> like the you're from italy or uh, france <laughs> right yeah it, those fucks they kiss each other and shit all the it, time it's a contract <laughs> my my we're jewish and my wife never like at least 50 times a year, she will point out the fact that we have a signed contract, like our wedding, yeah. with, there's a signed contract on the wall, like a college diploma. Like that's a contract you signed with me to blah, 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 blah. That's very and, Jewish of her. That's it, very, very. <laughs> very um, she's also from Africa. Oh, really? But North South? Africa. North Africa. Or North, okay. Yeah. Um, and but you're right <laughs> it is like a business deal but how like how did you guys prepare for that like obviously you know there's no more intimate knowing of someone than being married to them so you yeah. have the inherent all of that info for like your your material but you guys i mean obviously there was no hold barred in that like he and you like went for it like how did you guys prepare did you talk it through beforehand or was like how'd you do it well I think we both knew what things we could really attack that we were both even stuff. I was like, you can do this. And I know everybody thinks this and it'll be great if you mention this. Um, almost, they're almost like my insecurities. So it felt fine for me, like a, a control issue to be like, I'm letting you do this. You right. know, like, you know right, jokes yeah. about riding his coattails and then he openly talks about having herpes and he we're all like self-aware people i think yeah. and we're fine with our faults so we just let each other know exactly which faults we could talk about that i think the audience would be sh were shocked to know that we were okay with that yeah, it was it was kind of like I was like, wow, they must have a really, really good relationship <laughs> to like oh, some of the stuff that he said. Yeah, it was so good. It was really good. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. I can't wait to talk to her. After back. after the roast, were you guys like, I mean, I don't know what happened. Were you like in the car, or like on the subway and you were like, oh, you really had to <laughs> I want up like are there any fights come from that or like were you both like good job? OK, no, I think um no, a lot of people, some people have been like, was that rough? And I was like, no, in fact, that has never been one issue in our relationship is like stuff that came up in roast battle. Like right. we were there to pick up a check. We put on a show and then that was, we left and we were like, that was fun. And oh, then, totally. yeah, that was it. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, I mean, you're it's not, I mean, you, you don't get real roasting each other. You know what, they're, they're not going to be the, the nicest things ever to, you know, yeah. so you're like, Oh, you look pretty today. Next. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're not getting that. But Jesselnik seemed like he kind of like went out of his way to kind of be mean to Joe. Was that, <laughs> did you feel well, that? I think they've known each other in the past. So it was a comfortability. That's what I always and I'm not the only one that, but I think the general rule is for a good roast is have both parties really like each other. Yeah. So when like yeah. Jesselnik's going after Joe, he just knows that he can, yeah. you know, like, cause they're just friends. Right. Yeah. No, I, or there's I a respect that. there. Oh, totally. It, I, it's probably how they edited it a little bit too. And on for, yeah. the, you know, for TV, um, no, but it was fun. I really like, I like watching. I mean, I love roasts. Cause I do too. It's, it's like the last, um, area of just joke writing. Yeah. It, and that, like, you know, dark jokes too that are off color. That uh, I think totally. that's the place of doing it because both parties have signed up for it. Oh, no. I mean, that's the great thing, especially like, you know, when you watch these celebrity roasts who, you know, those guys. Oh. 
Brutal. for their life have been you know coddled for the most part and only told great things about themselves and then they sit in in a chair and have 10 you know and at least half of the those 10 are just of the sharpest comedic minds around just ripping them like that's pretty ballsy to sit in that chair knowing you're going to get shit on hard yeah i guess that just takes a certain personality because i've seen some comics do a roast and, th- and it looks like they're actually legitimately getting hurt by it yeah yeah oh, that's gotta be weird that's gotta be <laughs> strange does. to watch like uh, I, I i grew up with watching like my dad and my grandmother used to watch the dean martin roasts all the time yeah and, like those things i mean like I, you can still kind of do that today but like don rickles is going in on like you know wilt chamberlain about him being black and how he can't live in his neighborhood <laughs> yeah it's like that's like jerry seinfeld going after lebron right now you know what i mean like it's just it, it doesn't it, and you're like wow this is crazy like yeah. i can't believe oh, they're but wild wild talking about this openly talking about sinatra's mob connections you know, like <laughs> yeah. how someone's gonna be found in a garage next week rickles always threw that joke out and you're like jesus christ <laughs> yeah those were rough like that's when like there was there no sensitivities really you know yeah. in, in that time like there was not the sensitivity there is now to to you know all the pc shit which every day it's like you don't know which way to turn like who are you going to offend tomorrow with a joke yeah it's like frustrating i, I I'm, I'm enjoying doing tiktok and i had a strong opinion about a certain girl that wears these kind of hats and man <laughs> the hate that i get from it i'm like wow can you imagine if i had a real opinion like <laughs> it's so crazy I, I, I imagine if that. I had a real opinion. I love that. Yeah, you're talking about <laughs> fucking hats. <laughs> I didn't it's know those like, people that were like, so into uh, derbies. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'll tell you a TikTok thing. I posted one of my jokes up there, and it was about how um, both my grandfathers fought in World War II, et cetera, right? All this stuff. And instead of saying, I was like, you know, this, his platoon had 300 people. And it, I, I, that was the wrong terminology, apparently, because platoons were only in Vietnam. They weren't in World War II. Oh, yeah. There was a battle in the comments about like, well, technically, platoons didn't come along until 1965 when Vietnam <laughs> started. And I was like, hey, man, like, this is the t- end of a 12 minute set. I was having a fucking <laughs> panic attack before I worked on it for six months. And I fucked up that word. And it was like 40 comments. I was like, is anyone, anyone going to work? What are you guys doing? Don't yeah. you have a job, <laughs> anything? And it, I'm not kidding. Like 30, 40 comments. Like, well, technically guys going back and forth about what a platoon is and what it should be called. And what, what. And I was like, oh my God, I want to kill myself. Imagine if you made a watch. hat joke. If you, you would have added a hat to it, you would have yeah, crushed. I, I think I'm going to yeah. throw that in there. I'm going to try to add a hat joke in. Uh, so <laughs> let, let's talk about your podcast for a couple. Yeah. So you've been doing it, right? A long time? I want to say maybe the end of 2015. Yeah, that's a long, I mean, podcast. Good, for podcasts, that's, that's a good that's, bit. That's a long yeah. Time. Um, yeah. And I think you're over 300 episodes, right? Like I just, yeah, well, I'm thinking, this, that's we're, a, yeah we're about, yeah, we're at 322. Yeah. To be exact, 300. <laughs> well, I, I'm the one that does the editing. <laughs> you know, I don't, if you ask me, I'd be like, oh, we, we're at 126. Yeah, I, I, don't even, I don't even know where we're at until Greg just said it. I was like, oh, because Greg does our, our stuff. So I'm like, Nick's oh, like, okay. we have 120, well, I guess. That's, uh, <laughs> I mean, Adrian is, is another amazing, amazing comedian. Like she's so yeah, good. So, funny. Um, it, so like what, what, when you guys started doing it, like, did you have like a vision? Like, let's do a podcast like this or did it materialize with like different twists and turns as you guys been doing it for five years? We just figured like every time we're texting each other or talking, like we just go on these like weird tangents. And then we also were like, we should just get into the podcast game anyway because it just seems like another way to get a bigger audience or like um I don't know make some money and so we we have fun talking to each other so we couldn't ever think of like you know I'm I admire the podcasts that have a point of view right <laughs> like how do you do like how do you stick to it yeah we're just all over the place so we just stuck there we stick to an hour maybe start off with whatever what's going on and then like it just splits yeah. yeah well um is that the only podcast that you've done um i've done 
Two others. One was, I was going to, this was like over 10 years ago, maybe about 10 years ago. Oh, wow. A, a comics playing poker, but that was so labor intensive to like listen to a full poker game and pull out sound bites from it. Wow. And make it sound good. Um, that one was that, where I was like, after one of those, I was like, I can't do that. And then I did another one with uh, the two comics, Zach versus Hard and Brad Austin. And we were so all over the place with that one. Like we would tape an episode one week and then two weeks. It wasn't until like with Vag, I was like, oh, you have to do this on a consistent basis. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask you like, what, what, why did they, you know, why did they not progress? But that that's the main reason. Like if you're not doing them regularly, yeah. you can't really can have a, you can't build an audience for your podcast. You can certainly build an audience for your comedy, but- yeah you know, consistency is what keeps people listening, you know, especially if they're subscribers, because then it populates in their stuff every week and then they listen to it. If it's, uh, if it's missing for two weeks, then you kind of already lost half your audience. Yeah. And then they get, I mean, I always make sure our Patreon episodes are up on Monday, but man, this last one, we switched a producer for this month. I, we got someone else to take care of editing and all that stuff. And so they were a little bit behind and I just kept getting messages. It really stresses me out where I'm like, it'll be there. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> the fuck how, 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 long, this for free. <laughs> how long did it, I know, right? How long did it take <laughs> you to get to the point to do a paid service for the, for the podcast? Um, as soon as I found out about Patreon and then you're like, oh, maybe we can be like, come town. Right. And then you're like, no. But because uh, <laughs> he makes so much money, no. um, that's when I started signing up for it. And then, um, then it was like, wow, do we have to take this seriously when it happened, when pandemic happened? Cause we weren't sure what like a form of income was going to be like. For right. us. And is that, is that when you really started doing like doing it hard is when pandemic happened? Yeah. Like, and then we started doing like you know, incentive programs, trying to get people to come join a certain tier and we'll put right. on a show, like a live show yeah. on our Patreon for them. Or like, um, we were starting to do zoom hangs with listeners for money and stuff like that. Um, and then you're always surprised. You're like, God, you guys actually want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Cause like, you know, we, we keep tossing it back and forth, but you know, I think we need to get a little farther, um, before we go that route but you know same thing we took the whole you know pandemic experience to really to beef up the amount of episodes we did because we did we did an episode a day in may last last may God, which was I do two a week and i find it to be too much when you're also editing on top of it oh see the, the editing part we're we're not the best at but we that's why we try to keep them nice and tight yeah. uh, but it was way more of an undertaking than I thought it was going to be. I was like, oh, we'll just record these and then I will upload them and it'll be simple. And it was anything but like, it was so incredibly stressful. <laughs> like every day I was like, oh my God, I got to do this because it has to be out tomorrow. Like yeah. it was so much stress. Well, like people don't realize to upload an hour of video on YouTube almost takes an hour to do it. Yeah. I mean, it all takes, I mean, we, we were yeah. doing it on audio. We were doing it on video. I was doing all the art, all the booking. I mean, the synopsis, the replying to yeah. emails, the yep. comments, and like, you know, you, you, you need to be like engaged with your listeners. They like it. Yeah, totally. And I mean, I don't think I would do that again <laughs> because <laughs> like for one, it was a lot of recording, but we had nothing to do in that like March, April. Yeah, what do you talk about? So yeah, it was like three, four days of just like, th or, or I'm sorry, three, three to four podcasts a day for like, you know what I mean? March and April. Yeah. We were like, yeah, it was crazy. We did so many, but to be honest, it really helped us get our name out there kind of coast to coast. Right. So we, you know, we, I spend a lot of time in California. So I focused a lot on like the LA based comedians. And then of course on the New York based comedians, and it really helped us very quickly get our name in front of a lot of people. Right. Yeah. That, that without doing that, we wouldn't have been able to do it as fast, of course. And it led to us being able to book, you know, much bigger guests, much faster than everyone was doing nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No I mean, we're... gotcha. I know when they're like, I can't do it. I'm like, well, why? <laughs> like, <laughs> like what, what are you doing? 
Holy. like when, <laughs> when we had um the big one i remember the big one for me during the pandemic was uh he's like yeah we got jamie kennedy and i was like really i was like oh i guess he's really not doing anything <laughs> like i was like how and then i was like oh well the whole world shut down that's how we yeah got. there's like nothing to do also i'm still a sucker of like anytime ask me you're like you really thought of me like i take i'm like honored yeah. well you know i think it's you know like again to your point like why not do it what are you you know, if you have the time to do it, the more exposure, the better, yeah. like no matter how you cut it, you know what I mean? Like it, the, the days of just having, you know, at the, that one point, two late night shows to do, you know, now there's obviously for a comedians, multiple late night shows to do, but you can reach probably as big of an audience by going on 10 podcasts than a stand up set. Oh yeah. I mean, we always joke about that. Like now you just do late night so you can get a good tape. Yeah. Right. <laughs> to cut up and put on Instagram. Cause that seems to like matter more. Like it feels good to do a late night, but honestly, every time I do it, I've gone back to my day job afterwards, which I call now the walk of shame. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, weren't you on Fallon? You're like, yes. Yeah. How can I help you? <laughs> How do you want your coffee? <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's that's what I hear. All these guys, um, like New York City guys, like Chris Stefano, told this story about like he's done a few late night sets, um, and like you don't really get a big bump from it. But then he went to L.A. and did a few podcasts, and you know, he said in one weekend he got forty thousand new Instagram followers. Yeah. Off, you know what I mean? So he's like, what the fuck am I doing trying to get on Jimmy F or Jimmy Kimmel or whatever? Like, what am I? Why? At 12 o'clock at night and yeah. everyone's just going to bed at that time when you could do Rogan, who I actually think gets better numbers than Fallon does. Oh, I, that's, I think that's Joe Rogan, like the biggest show in the world. Period. That's the new Tonight Show. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to prepare and you don't have to have a book or be like getting five minutes is so hard for your first time because they're so particular and they, cause they're so nervous that you're just going to like put your foot in your mouth or do something crazy on stage. Because sometimes you'll watch an, a, a comic that's been on a lot of times. You're like, man, if I, if that's the set that I turned in for a first timer, they, it would have been rejected. Yeah. It's yeah. just hard and could get a perfect set. It's just like not the easiest. Like somebody stands in front of your camera you accidentally say fuck in the first five or first minute. You know what I mean? Like, it's really hard to get a good tape down. It it's a long process. And then you can just go on a podcast without having to do all that stuff anymore. Yeah. They like, I, they, do they cut like for late night? I'm always curious. Like, it, don't get me wrong. We, I, we're kind of knocking late night, but if today they were like, you're going to do late night. So I'd be like, okay, sign me yeah. up. You know what oh, I mean? Like, I'm not going to say no at this point. I don't have that luxury, but, um, did they like chop away at certain things or be like, can't use that? Cause again, I keep talking about Chris Stefano, but he brought it up. He has a joke about his daughter. Uh, she's half Puerto Rican and he kind of does the accent and they were like, don't do the accent. Isn't that and, he, crazy? and he's like, no, it's like my, that's my daughter though. Like she's mine. <laughs> he's like, I'm not making fun of, I'm not making fun of Puerto Like her mom's Puerto Rican. It's my girlfriend. Like I'm not trying to be, that's who, that's the joke. Like she's my kid and they yeah. chopped away it you know what i mean i get i understand like doing some voices can be very racially insensitive but I get, like yeah. i sometimes feel like if you do it in a respectful way and not making fun of class or anything like that then if it's part of the story then it should be fine yeah especially if it's coming out of suppose like a four or five year old girl's mouth it's like yeah. supposed to be like a funny you know what i mean they're like don't do it and he was like, oh, it is, oh, it is okay. crazy <laughs> sensitivities because today i was talking to john from stand up new york and I was, I, I forgot why, what reference I was using, but I, I mentioned, uh, it was a food reference and I mentioned ramen, right? And he, he goes, why did you pick ramen of all things? And I'm like, I don't know, John, because I eat a lot of ramen. I don't know. <laughs> like, he, was I know. My, he was busting my chops, just obviously giving me a hard time. He wasn't offended or anything, but like you. You do. You have to be really careful who you're talking to and, and what you say about like the simplest things. Oh, it's crazy. I remember one time we were, I was playing a game with friends and then acquaintances or friends of those friends. And one of the girls was Asian and we had to guess who in the group liked sushi. And it was one of the <laughs> last few, but I was like, every, most people in New York love sushi. Sure. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let because she's Asian 
not be right in my answer. You know what I mean? So I just said it. And then she was like, racist. And I was like, <laughs> on. <laughs> you baited me into that. I know. But- I was like, that's not fair. And like, everybody likes sushi. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's like- fuck off. Yeah, who likes sushi? Who's the worst driver here? You're like, all right, <laughs> let's. I mean, that would, yeah, that would be different. <laughs> Speaking of like, sushi, yeah, I felt baited. What's your yeah. favorite cheese? My my favorite cheese? Yeah. God, I think I like Manchego. Ooh, I've never even heard of that. It's That's just incredible. A Spanish cheddar, almost. I think yeah. maybe like out of goat cheese or something. It's but the- I, or I like brie, and I like blue. Uh, I, I don't love know. this. I said you're like it's the Spanish cheddar. Like it's that new. <laughs> it's like it's that new hot shit. It's that new hot cheese. <laughs> it's it's the Spanish so cheddar. I don't know if you know about it, but <laughs> I'm just curious. I don't know why I I why I asked about cheese. Um, but I I like those choices, and I'll tell you, it's funny because I I asked lots of people like what their favorite cheese is, and like 75 percent of the people say Gouda, and then I'm like. That can't possibly be true. Sarah's face. That was so Gouda's funny. not like a good eat by itself cheese. I think it's too smoky for my liking. I I don't, have never had a piece of Gouda and been like, oh my God, I have found my new favorite cheese. And I love cheese yeah. of all kinds. And I just, I've never had that happen ever. I've had like a, a real crazy, like pungent blue cheese and been like, wow, that's a good cheese. Yeah. Right never said that about Gouda. So I think the people that claim Gouda as their favorite cheese are full of shit. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about what mine would be. I'm like, I think they just want to say Gouda. Like, cause there's not a yeah. lot of cheeses that have a fun sounding name, you know, what about Munster, Munster cheese. Munster's is pretty, pretty good. Good for it sandwich. It's a like, sandwich cheese. It's a sandwich. So Swiss. No, yeah. my dad. Really used to eat by itself. I love Swiss cheese. It is really one no. of my favorite cheeses. By itself, Craig? Oh, yeah. Like, if I have Swiss cheese in the house, Gross. I could easily just go snake a couple of pieces, of, like, roll them up <laughs> like a food roll up and nope. be like, there's my snack. You know what's weird? Nope. I like, I can't eat Kraft Singles by itself, but on a burger, for some reason, I'm like, it's pretty good on a burger. Oh. But by no. itself, I'm like, disgusted. Totally. Yeah, you're, you're like, what's this plastic sheet, yellow sheet I'm eating? <laughs> Same thing with like Velveeta or like squeeze cheese. Like you would never do anything with that except if you had a piping hot steak sandwich and then you throw like you squeeze a little on there or something like in the onions or mushrooms. Yeah. It's like, like a mayonnaise. Yeah. 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 I like the my father owned a bagel place in New York and he used to make pizza bagels with Munster cheese and it would be melted. That's when I was like, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. Like that I was all about. But yeah. It's been a while. I haven't had cheese in a long time. I used to put cheese I, on bagels. You what? I used to put cheese on bagels, like with cream cheese, and then oh, like the pieces of bread. I've done that. I've done. Ugh, that. I was a mess. kid. I like fantasize of the perfect cheese board. I like that this is our new podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll tell you. We started thing. with coronavirus. We're ending with cheese boards. Hey, we're going to end on Corona also. <laughs> My, I had a friend. Uh, he's a music publicist who had a music magazine back in the early 2000s that was called fromage right mm. and he in he, the whole entire premise of his magazine was he would interview bands and you know guys in the music industry musicians and the only topic of conversation was cheese oh that's fun it was really a his is a very funny magazine and I, I like I always tell people that story because I'm like he had this magazine and pre blog pre everything and all they did was talk about cheese but with musicians. <laughs> so, oh, I'd love so to cool. hear the insight. I really do. I pre- did a question on Facebook once about what's your favorite cheese, and it was really engaging. Like people are really on board about talking about cheese. Totally, <laughs> it's a, it was a print magazine too. This was like internet, pr- like obviously the internet yeah. existed, but he like printed it out. You could find it in like Tower Records, and I was, it was genius. It was, he's one of the smartest guys I know. Like oh, so smart. So um, I have one more question. I want to know what your guilty pleasure is music wise. Like when you're alone and you'd want to turn on some music that you don't want anyone to know that you're listening to, who is it? You know what? I, I don't know. It's not like I'm like embarrassed about music, but sometimes like, um, 
I don't, I'm just trying to think, like, I remember, I think I could get embarrassed about listening to Enya, which is something that I would like. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I... <laughs> 90s new age. I think I could really I jam not, out to in I my room. I did not see that coming. I didn't either. I would <laughs> never be that. Like, you that... really sideswiped us, Sarah. That really, <laughs> holy shit. Enya. Nick I has no not... idea who Enya is. He doesn't even know what Enya is. No, it's just, it's just sounds, isn't it? It's basically just sounds, no, right? No, it's like a Gaelic she's irish and sings in an old tongue but no i remember the commercials there was commercials for her yeah. cds right yeah yeah, yeah. and uh she, speak, she sings in english as well but like uh i think her she hit it big in the 90s with yeah. that movie far and away with yeah. Yeah. nicole kim and uh tom, tom cruise, cruise but yeah. she had a moment oh she had a moment all right yeah she, was <laughs> she had a moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Dude, funny. and yeah i did that's... not that really whoo I well, out of nowhere. that is good. Uh, and it's a good place to end. Um, we want to thank our new sponsor, Corona Premier Beer. If wow. you're into light beers, um, it's, uh, very <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you were going to ask my musical uh, yeah. guilty pleasure, I don't think this is a surprise to Nick is uh, pink. Okay. Like that's she, she rocks it. Her her voice is amazing. She's an incredible that's, singer. I think it's because Greg and her have the same hairstyle, kind of. Okay. Like you saw Greg's hair. Is it like, pink? Oh, it's it's nice. purple. It's purple. <laughs> Shaved on the sides, it's cut right. You know what I mean? They're kind of the same. They both like bad boys. They date bad boys. It's, it's very yeah. 90, 90s boy band. Do you guys both have that cut that goes right to your penis? <laughs> <laughs> No, like we use I use manscaped. Like <laughs> <laughs> I missed I whatever led into that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna say probably not. Okay. <laughs> you mean like the Austin Powers, like the the, <laughs> the kind of like No, there's like a, a cut near in the hip that looks like it most guys have it, but every now and then oh, girls you're that saying... are like in gymnastics have it, which I think she does too. Like oh the muscles. To- yeah, the muscle. Oh, uh, I thought you meant like the hair. No, yeah. no, I not hair. I'm I'm a voluptuous boy. I'm too thick for that. That's not. Yeah. I'm like 220 pounds. <laughs> yeah, so. Tits. Yeah. He, Nick does like. You'll see like the a person f- one day. Like Nick. <laughs> Nick has definitely an envious, an envious upper body. Yeah. I remember getting measured in high school for like we all went together to get our tuxes for prom. And it was me and a bunch of my buddies were all on the football team. And like, they, they, they would measure us and they would just go <laughs> probably going to be an athletic fit. Right. Like you're going to stretch. And I'm like, I was like, stretch. I don't know. Like I'm, this is like my fourth time wearing a suit. I'm 16. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. And they're like, ah, yeah, we don't know. Or it's going to take a while to order. How, when's your prom? And we're like, all right, <laughs> fuck you. Nick was the original <laughs> investor in the man's ear. God. That age is so brutal. They shouldn't make you wear tuxes. You should just show up in a nice outfit. I remember going, I had this conversation. You remember Abercrombie, obviously. Yeah. Everyone, right? It was huge back in they, the day. They didn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're still there, but like, who really, you know? Um, I remember going to Abercrombie in high school. I was, you know, I was offensive lineman. So I was like 240 pounds. I was a big guy. And one of our wide receivers, tall, thin, had abs. He had that cut, was working yeah. at Abercrombie. And we're like, let's go to the mall and see Mike. And we're like, all right. We go to the mall. And I, I was like, so, like, you think I could, like, get a polo from here or whatever? And he was like, man, he goes, we keep all those big stuff in the back. And I was like, what do you mean in the back? He's like, it's in the back. And he brought out a triple XL that was – so tight but it's abercrombie so it's the way it's cut i'm like what the fuck i'm a triple xl this doesn't make sense it killed me i was 16 years old i was like i'm a triple xl this is horrible (laughs) no i remember i i could fit in their stuff and then as soon as i hit like 22 i couldn't even get my thigh into (laughs) any of their pants you're there that company went down because they're actually really insulting apparently like they don't Anything that they can't sell, they throw it away or burn it because they don't want homeless people wearing it. Ugh. Isn't that fucked up? You want to hear some? Uh, it's another thing that's fucked up. Our buddy that worked there, the same kid I was just talking about, people that 
weren't as good looking as the people out on the floor. They people they would hire them at Abercrombie, but they were called impact people, and they would just be in the back <laughs> yeah. folding and putting shit together. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He was like, "Yeah, all like like the uglier people or like the chubbier people they put in the back." And I was like, <sighs> "What?" <laughs> oh. I get I it though, but like, fuck off. I get it's their brand. Yeah. It's like, you know what I mean? I understand, but. Do you ugh. remember when they used to have the guy standing. With the shirt off? Outside? With the shirt off outside in the, like the mall that would just stand there with yeah. his shirt off and be like, come on in Abercrombie. Oh get yeah. This. I took my dad in there once when I was like young 20s or early teen, late teens. And I remember him being like to the employees being like, how, how do you work here? Because the music's at like a decibel level that is not for human. It's just like so loud. And then you're just getting pumped with cologne. The He's cologne. Like, I knew you were going to, oh, yeah. that was the, <laughs> you get a fucking headache immediately. <laughs> it reminds me of like Las Vegas being in a casino, but no slot machines. Oh, yeah. It's that just sucked. sensory overload. It's yeah. awful. Gross. I just I just remember going there with my grandmother who like, you know, her, her father was like a World War II vet and owned a taxi company and all this stuff, right? So she's like really from Queens. And I was like, I want these jeans. She's like, how much are they? I was like, $130. She's like, they're ripped. <laughs> Why do you want ripped jeans? They're all ripped. She goes, what is this, the Great Depression again? Why do you want ripped pants? I don't understand. Yeah. And I was like, that's the style, grandma. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so kidding. dumb looking back. <laughs> so stupid. Okay, so um, we didn't talk about your actual comedy album, except for how how it how it Arts. works with Nick's <laughs> upper body, um, lower body too. Yeah, this album came out in earlier in twenty twenty, mid twenty twenty. Yeah. It came out July. Just made right? the cut. Yeah. Yeah. That's mid ish. Yeah, that is mid. Sorry, Back sorry. In the middle. I was. I don't know why. For a moment, I thought you were saying that I recorded at mid July. Oh no, 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 no. No, we, we uh, talked about that. You recorded in March. <laughs> yeah, you got everybody. You brought everybody to get, to get sick. <laughs> yeah, you remember you went on stage. You're like, "Fuck all you. You're staying. No one's leaving." I remember that's the opening. That's the right? Door. We're all gonna yeah, kill. Yeah, yeah. Like, shake hands. It's gonna be. That's how we're going out. We're going out Fuck with you this. guys. <laughs> Fuck everybody. So, but you mentioned you're you're putting it out as a comedy special on your YouTube. I'm going to, yeah, I, I, uh, I found the footage. There was some lost footage and it looks good enough. And I'm going to, I'm having someone help me edit it and splice it up. I'm making it, I think I'm making it look like an eighties comedy special. That's cool. And I, I mean, you could have like the Seinfeld baseline. <laughs> are you, are you going <laughs> to call jokes? Are, are you going to call it? It's good enough. Yeah. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it might be good. It, maybe you let me know. Uh, well, fortunately, the audio from it and the video all synced up, so it's going to have good audio. It just won't have like amazing crane shots or right. cutaways to audience, but I'm I'm going to splice in some '80s audiences. Plus, like anytime I watch a comedy special, sometimes I'm like, why do I, I don't need this many cutbacks? I don't need to have a camera angle where we're behind the comic or from the side stage or where it's like right by their chin, like. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know what? You should um you should check out uh Jeremiah Watkins new one that just came out called Family Reunion and it was very simple. Like their shoot was super duper simple. Like one camera, just him. It was you'll check it out. Check out some of the footage it's all over his Instagram and and stuff. Um, yeah. I don't think you need to do much these days with like comedy specials. Yeah. At, no, you just got to wear a bomber jacket and like a dope chain. And that's, yeah. uh, that's pretty every guy's well, like, costume. There's <laughs> a, uh, a Richard Pryor special that's shot where I think it's in Compton and he, the audience hasn't even sat down fully and he just starts the show. So you're just yeah, like, I remember, I know exactly. I don't so know the name good. of it. It's yeah. hilarious. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So like, <laughs> He's making fun of them for coming in late. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, listen, I hired these people to shoot this. I only have an hour and six minutes. So like I have a three minute on front and back. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we're starting. <laughs> Get in your fucking seat. <laughs> yeah. I just think if the jokes are good and then it, it, it looks well and it sounds well, then that's all you need. So that's what I'm doing. Totally. And you're putting it out just on your own YouTube. Yeah, I'm going to put it on YouTube. It's free. And if you want to Venmo me because you are nice. I feel like that's been the tradition lately of putting your special on YouTube. And if you want to Venmo me, that's great. Yeah. But if you don't, that's great. I don't care. I don't give a shit. <laughs> well, 
people who are listening should Venmo her for watching her special. <laughs> like, or you know, send you know, or send her that Spanish cheddar cheese. Yeah, or, or subscribe to yeah. her Patreon. I mean, come on, <laughs> we live in a world you got to pay for things. Yeah. Well, I just want you to watch it because I want to monetize my YouTube channel. That's yeah, all sure. I care about right now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're, we that's what we're doing. And I love watching 12 cents at a time roll in. Yeah. It makes me hey. feel really good. Yeah. Really After a while, you can start making the big bucks. <laughs> I know. Greg and I are going to go out to dinner tonight, celebrate the 24 cents we made today. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've made $11 on TikTok. <laughs> hey. I... I looked at our YouTube the other day because they sent me a form that I had to fill out for taxes. And I think in, I, I think we're up north of $50. It might be like $60. That's pretty great. On hey, our, on whatever. Time to retire. Fuck it's it. the hey, beginning. 12 cents at a time. I mean, it, counts. <laughs> it counts. Warren Buffett just said compounding interest. So yep, I'm just going to follow gonna, that. Got, all in GameStop stock. <laughs> see what happens anyway this was awesome we did way more time than we usually do that that's that, that's awesome uh, oh thank you this was awesome. yeah so a great time you're hilarious anything else you want to pimp while we got time uh no just badge podcast <laughs> and uh just my badge you know what's funny I'll tell you I, what thought, I thought you weren't gonna say podcast i thought you were just gonna <laughs> just, just, badge. Badge. I was like, just badge we're promoting that yeah. we, I, I asked nick before we got on i'm like you know we really should talk about our name because it keeps coming up in places like oh you know we can't do this because of the name you can't put this blah 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 mostly in sponsorship and stuff like that when we're promoting on for other shows and we're like what do you want to do about the name and he's like i don't know like i really like the name but if it's holding us back in some places we should think about you know how to how to address it and i'm like well we're about to interview sarah and the name of her podcast is vag <laughs> so if she's not having any problems we shouldn't either <laughs> right? like, really? and, and i'm like you know besides that you have guys we fucked which is like one of a super popular you know, come down Come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. He brought all those up and I was like, you're right. Cause he, like, he always, when we first started this, he used to bust my balls. Cause before sets, he would be like, tell the host or whoever, like you're the host of the Mangina dialogues. And I'd be like, oh, I don't want to like come out to that. They're going to hate me already. Maybe like, you know, right. I'm just, I was so nervous before my sets. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want anyone to know that. Like, <laughs> let me just, I just want my, I want my set to be good and them to worry about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, just but remember not, there's so. band names that are like goo goo dolls. So yeah. it's fine. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, I hate saying these two words in, out loud but when i used to go to tower records every single day because i lived on the same block as tower records the first aisle you'd walk in is the a aisle right yeah so the first band i used to see every day like i would walk in it'd be like four feet in it was Abba. a no 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 like way <laughs> grosser it was a band called anal seaward <laughs> <laughs> that wow. was the name of the band, like a punk band. <laughs> and I'm like, how does that band go out and play live? How? Yeah. Like, how could they advertise that blank blank is coming to your town or is playing Donna Hills or wherever in the city or wherever they play? Like, that's the worst name you could possibly have. But if those guys can do it, the Mangina Dialogues should have an easy Definitely. Pass. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that, if Sarah likes it, I like it then. That's it. Yeah. That's On that note, host of the Vag podcast and a YouTube special coming. Thank you very much for hanging with us. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Enjoy, they, enjoy your cheese, Sarah. Yeah. Have a great rest of your stay, week. Stay healthy. <laughs>